I've booted my computer up using the Ubuntu server installation disk. The first screen that I see is just the language for the main menu. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. And my first option is at the top here to install the Ubuntu server. Now that's what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and hit enter again. And it's looking to see if it can mount any hard drives here. If you already had a previous operating system installed, later on through this process you'll have to unmount that particular drive. So here I am at the language, which is just the language for the operating system to be installed with. So I'll go ahead and choose English for that. And the United States is where I live. Now I don't always, and I usually don't, allow the keyboard to be automatically detected. You will have to type in a couple different keys for it to determine what kind of keyboard you have. I'm going to choose no, and it defaults here to English, and English again. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter for those. Now the next screen that I see is the host name for the computer. And this is the name just given to the computer to identify it on your network. I'm going to go ahead and use Ubuntu hyphen, and then in this case, I'll just type in server, but you can name it whatever you want, and I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now I have the full name of the user. So you can use capital letters here, and you can use spaces, so I'll type in my first and last name. However, when I hit enter, it's going to go ahead and default to the username of being a lowercase single word username. So you can see my name is now all lowercase letters in just one word. This is the login username for Ubuntu. I'll go ahead and enter and accept that. And I'll type in a password. Okay, so the home directory can be encrypted if you wanted to. And if it's my own personal computer, I usually encrypt it. However, for lab purposes and just for testing, I usually don't encrypt it for that purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and choose no for this. And I can accept just the default here. This is my time zone, so I'll go ahead and hit enter for that. Now I do not have an operating system already installed on this hard drive that the computer sees. So it's going to go ahead and just say, hey, use the entire disk and set up my operating system. If you already had a previous operating system installed, you may see different options for different partitions of your hard drive. If you plan on just wiping the entire hard drive and installing Ubuntu over it, then you can use the same option I have on default. So I'm going to go ahead and use this and just hit enter. And there's the hard drive I want to select, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter for that as well. I need to accept these changes, so I'll use the left arrow and hit yes. And it's going to default to use the entire hard drive. I could partition it down into smaller sizes if I wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it. This is a 50 gig hard drive, and I'm just going to leave this default to the maximum size of the hard drive and hit enter. And this is a summary of what I plan on doing. I'm going to go ahead and accept the changes and hit yes. In most configurations, you will not have to use a proxy server. So if you're at home, more than likely you do not have to have this set up. However, if you're at a in place of employment that actually uses a proxy in order to get out to the outside world or to the internet, you'll have to type in that information. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter here. Normally, if this was a production server, I would choose to install security updates automatically, especially if this has a public-facing internet address, a public address. But because I'm using this for just lab testing and on my own personal computer, just for setting up, I'm going to go ahead and do no automatic updates. What's also nice about this installation is that you can choose the different server roles that you want to have set up. So, for instance, open SSH. If I press the space bar, it'll go ahead and select that, and if I accepted this, it would install it on the server itself. Now I'm going to choose not to select any of these, because later on in different lessons, I will install all of the common ones manually. But I'm going to go ahead and hit tab to go to continue, and then hit enter. When you get to this point, your operating system has actually been installed. There's one last little part, and that is to install the bootloader so that when your computer turns on, and looks towards your hard drive to boot, it'll find the operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to install the scrub bootloader, and I'll go ahead and hit enter. And now it's finished, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to continue. My computer will restart, and it should boot up to the login screen. Alright, so here's the login screen. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Remember, it's lowercase all one word. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and type in my password. 
and I've successfully logged into the Ubuntu operating system.